Imagine this. Imagine it's 2,000 years ago before Facebook, before the automobile, before electricity, before people really understood about science and germs, before people even really knew the shape of the globe. Your job, well really it's not just your job, it's your entire life. Your whole life is to be a sheep herder. You lead a simple life, a lot of routine from day to day. Uh, the same thing each and every day. You kind of lose track of the days of the week and the days of the year. Uh, you take the flock out to graze and then you bring them somewhere safe at night. You defend the sheep from wolves and, you know, that kind of stuff. Amazing things don't really happen to you. Yeah, every once in a while you get to go into the big city uh, to make a sale or go to market, maybe attend some religious festival. Uh, and it's fun and all to see the big city, to, to see the excitement and everything. But the truth is you really don't like it that much. The people there are kind of rude. They really look down on you and they don't understand the beauty of sheep. And they think you're unclean and smelly. They're kind of stuck up and they're pretty full of themselves. They think they're more important than you are and they think they're more righteous, more clean, more holy. They think that Yahweh likes them more. What they don't really understand is that all of their religious festivals, all of their important holidays and holy days, all of their sacrifices, none of that would be possible without you without your work, without your sheep. The flocks that you keep watch over in the middle of the night, those are the unblemished lambs that they use in the temple as their holy sacrifice. The Orthodox people, they may despise you, but whether they know it or not, their religion depends on your work. Good morning, I'm Pastor Tully, here with my Wednesday morning message. Over the last couple of weeks, we've been talking about the theology of the Christmas stories. Today is lesson number three, and we're looking at the shepherds in the field from the Gospel of Luke. Uh, now, the last two weeks, we were looking at stories in the book of Matthew. Uh, we looked at the wise men, and we looked at King Herod. Uh, but this week, we're stepping over to the book of Luke. Uh, now, both Gospels, Matthew and Luke, they tell the story of Jesus' birth, but each version focuses on very different details, almost to the point that you could read them as two very different stories. Uh, both Gospels are trying to begin uh, with the point that Jesus' salvation is for everyone. Matthew, which is a gospel particularly focused on the Hebrew people. Uh, so Matthew began with the foreign magi, the wise men from out of town uh, coming in. Uh, and, and that was his way of showing that Jesus was for the whole world and not just for Israel. Luke takes a different approach. Luke's whole gospel has a special emphasis on the poor and the outcast. And Luke makes the point that Jesus' salvation is for everyone, not just the rich and the powerful and the important people. And this is why Luke starts with the shepherds in the field. These are the people whom God deems worthy. The lowly shepherds, the dirty shepherds, the outcasts of society who quite literally sleep in a field outside. They're trying to eke out a living on the edge of town. And God looks at those people and says, you, you're the ones who get the good news first. These are the people that the angel of the Lord visits to announce Jesus is born. So we've set the stage, uh, we've got the scene, uh, we're here in the field with the lowly outcast shepherds, they're half asleep in the middle of the night, and then all of a sudden, bam, this angel shows up and the sky was lit up like it was daytime. Now this is before electricity, so this would have been the most amazing, the most majestic thing that any of these shepherds had ever seen, that any person at that time had ever seen and standing before them is the angel of the Lord. Now the first words the angel says is, do not be afraid. This makes sense because this whole experience would have been terrifying. The kind of thing that would give a man a heart attack 
right there on the spot. And the angel announces that the Savior to the world is born and has been laid in a manger. And then, then the angel levels up and a whole heavenly host appears with the angel as well. Uh, now this words, heavenly host, this could also be translated as heavenly army. Again, this would have been a terrifying experience. And so they all show up and they're singing and they're praising God. This is the most amazing thing that anyone could have ever seen. And God chooses the shepherds. Not the important people, not the kings, not the rich, but the lowly, dirty shepherds, the outcasts, the poor, the people who were rejected by the rest of society. And these are the people that God says, you, you are the ones who get the good news first. A bunch of stinky shepherds rejected by everyone else. But of course, God chooses them first. Thanks for watching. Uh, I'll see you next week when we'll answer the age-old idiom, were you born in a barn?